את השם, פרשת יתרו. סונדיסו איקס פרשה עברה, ישמע יתרו, כהן מדיין חותן משה את כל אשר עשה אלוהים למשה ולישראל עמו. יתרו heard everything that השם did for ישראל, משה and ישראל עמו. So she says, מה שמועה שמה הוא בא. What did he hear that made him come? Everybody heard. שמוע עמים. When we say קריאת ים סוף, שמוע עמים, מרגזון, כן? But מה שמועה שמה הוא בא. What made him come? Right? So she says two things. He says over here, קריאת ים סוף ומלחמת עמלק. He heard about קריאת ים סוף. How three million people are crossing the Yam Suf, and six hundred Egyptians are getting drowned. And then he hears about Milchemet Amalek, right after coming out of Yam Suf, Amalek comes and he tries to attack Am Israel. Vayachalosh Yehoshua, and Yehoshua, Hashem told him, don't kill them, just weaken them and send them away. So those two things he hear, hears, Veba, and he comes. Okay? So we have, to, we have to explain what's so special about those two things. He for sure heard about Esra Makot, Right, Dam Tzfadiyah Kinim Arof. This is something that the whole world heard about, right? If we sure heard about the man, Rashi later on says you heard about the man coming down, right? Be'er Shel Miriam, he gave them water. All those things everybody heard. But why those things, two things that made him come? What is so special? So I think the, 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 there is something in common between Kriyat Yam Suf and Mechem Tamalek. Kriyat Yam Suf, okay? We see over there, 600 people chasing after the Am Israel, right? And those Egyptians that chased us, they're supposed to be tzaddikim. Why are they supposed to be tzaddikim? Rashi asked a question. How did they get horses? How did they get horses? So it says in Makat Barad, Vayare edevar Hashem, who have feared the words of Hashem when Moshe Rabbeinu warned them in Dvar Hashem, there's going to be Barad. Who is not going to take his animal into the house, his animal is going to die in the field. And one of those people did not fear Hashem was Bil'am, like Rashi brings down Parashat Balak, when they asked Bil'am, how come you have a chamor, a ton? Where, why don't you have a horse? You're a Navi Aumot Ha'olam, you should have a horse, you should be mechubad. Ah, Rashi says over there, because he lost his horse in Makat Barad. He lost his horse in Makat Barad. So those who had horses are tzaddikim, because they know Hashem is going to say, Barad is going to be Barad, right? And the Torah says, Vayare et devar Hashem. And they come and they chase after us. How is it possible? You fear Hashem. You know I have everything Hashem did down. Barad already, you fear Hashem. And you bring your animals, so you have horses. And you run after Jewish. This is called pride. Ga'ava, right? But it comes from arrogance. You can be proud. I'm proud to be Jewish. I'm proud to do mitzvot, right? But there is a pride that comes from ga'ava, from arrogance. And they were arrogant. They says, ah, what? They destroyed our country. Yes, we fear Hashem, but listen, they're running away now. They're taking, they took all our money. What? We're not going to see them anymore. So they had this pride. They're willing to die for their pride. They know they're not going to get out of this situation. They're running after the Jews. You saw everything Hashem does for them. You saw Hashem is protecting them. You, you know it's something is going to happen to you, and you're still running after them. That's Gava. The same thing, Amalek. The same problem with Amalek. Why? Amalek had this arrogance and, and pride that he has to kill the Jews. Rashi says he traveled Arba Mot Parsa. Each Parsa is four kilometers. Four times 400, it's 1,600 kilometers by foot. He traveled 1,600 kilometers by foot. It for sure didn't take one day or two days or three days. It took him time. But he heard already the Jews are coming out of Egypt. Oh, coming out again uh, after them, right? And he comes. And what does Rashi says in Mechemet Amalekim and the Parsha B'Shalach? The bat was boiling. Ambatya, rotachat, boiling water. If you put your finger, you're going to burn. And this Mishuga is willing to jump inside the water, get burned, right? To cool off the bath in the eyes of other nations. Don't be scared of them. They're nothing special. Here, we, we got burned, so what? Amalek got half killed, half weakened, half thrown away. So what? Gava. And what's his pride? Ma Gava shelo. His Gava was the, the Am Israel, Avraham Avinu, 
did not accept his mother to be converted to Judaism. Abraham Avinu did not want to accept Timna. Timna is his mother, right? So Abraham Avinu did not want to accept her. For some reason, we don't know why, right? If you look in the parasha, basically his mother was a mamzeret, right? It was a relationship, uh, brother, Esav. sisters, is that father. Is that huh? coming from Esav? Yeah, Esav. Kol Esav mamzerim. So Abraham Avinu didn't want to convert her, right? So she probably told, told him all about it. You know, I was trying to become Jewish. I was trying to, to go to join the Jewish people with Abraham Avinu. He didn't let me, right? So he's right. what? He didn't let you become Jewish? He didn't want you? I'm going to show him, right? And imagine yourself, she was feeding her son poison. Exactly what's happening in the Shtachim over there, right? What are they saying? Oh, your father got killed. Why he got killed? Because he was a, a suicide bomber. For sure he got killed, right? He died. He by died himself. But no, the mother, what is she telling him? You know, he died, they killed him. So this little guy, he has five, six years old, he grows with sinah, with anger, right? With, with, with hate against the Am Israel. Same thing Amalek. So he had this pride. He knew he's going to get burnt. Rashi says, Ambati rotacha. The bat is so boiling. You put your finger in it. He says, it doesn't make a difference. He's willing to make a point, right? That his pride is going to go against him. When he told, hears about people so proud and they're willing to die with their arrogance, right? He comes. Vayavo, right? He came to the Midbar. What's the Midbar? But she says, he told was so rich, was so important. He leaves everything behind and he comes to join Amisrael. Where does he come? To the Midbar. So he says, money is not important. Kavod is not important. He saw what Gava can lead you to. He saw what arrogance can lead you to. So he says he's leaving everything behind, all his kavod, all his money, all his family, and he's coming to join Am Israel to convert. So we see that Itro, it was important to him to make also a point, right? It says in Rashi, he came to be mechazek Moshe Rabbeinu. Don't be, don't be impressed with Amalek. Don't be impressed with those Egyptians. There's still good people in the world. There's still people that have anava, right? Daish Moshe, anav nod, right? He said, they say one time, it was a Rebbe, they called him a tzaddik me Apta, from the, the city of Apta. And this Rebbe, one time, he went somewhere, and they offered him two houses to stay by. He went for a weekend somewhere, and he had two, a choice of two houses. Both of them were givirim, givirim like very rich people, and they had... Uh, a home to give just to the Rebbe, right? They could have a big, big home, big, uh, comfortable, uh, nice arrangements, right? One of the one of the people over there was tzaddik, right? But uh, a little bit arrogant. Gavta, Gavta, right? He was rich, but he was Gavta, but a good person. Mitzvot, Torah, mitzvot, bal chesed, and everything. The other one was also. Ashim, very Ashim of flag and everything. But everybody spoke bad about him. Oh, you know this guy, he does this. But he was Baal Chesed, he was giving tzedakah, he was, he, he everything, kasher le madrin, everything, but people spoke about him. When they came to the Rebbe and they asked him, where the Rebbe want to stay? So after, right away the Rebbe said, I want to stay by the guy that kulam meranenim alav, everybody's speaking bad about him. Rabbeinu. <laughs> Why go? What? Yes, he's kosher, yes, but everybody speaks bad about him. Why should you go to him? Yeah. So the Rebbe said, I'll tell you something. The other guy is gavtan, he's arrogant. And it says in the Gemara, en ani vehu yecholim ladur achat. Somebody's arrogant, a kashuchu does not come into his house. When I'm going to come to a house? I'm going to come to a house without the Shekhinah? I don't need this such a house. I prefer the other one, they speak bad about him, but at least the Shekhinah comes to his house. So to tell you, arrogance is so bad that the Shekhinah doesn't want to stay there. She runs away from him. So this is the, this is the, this is a, a Gavta. We can understand also now, we can understand also a Gemara. You probably know the Gemara. The Gemara in the end of Brachot, the last page of Brachot, Nundaled over there, the Gemara says the, the Rosh Hashiva of Eretz Yisrael passed away. And then they had the choice of two Rabbanim. There was Rabba and Rav Yosef. Rabba, right, was okerarim. It was mepalpel. You know, everything that he didn't know a lot. He did not know a lot. But whatever he knew, 
he know he know it's so deep, right? You cannot ask him any question. Okay, Rarim, is he can uproot a mountain. Rav Yosef was not the candidate, and Rav Yosef was Sinai. Was a Sinai? He knew a lot, but maybe if you ask him deep questions or stirot, eh, maybe. But he knew a lot, and the question was, what should we choose? So we choose somebody who doesn't know a lot, but he's okay, Rarim, or should we choose somebody who knows a lot, but Right? He does not do that, but he knows a lot. Any question you're gonna ask him any subject, oh I know this is Shuhana Buch in this place, I know it is a it's a Yalkut Yosef, I know it's this, I know that. So the question was asked, and the Rabbanim they said it's better to take Sinai, Rav Yosef. Why? The Olam, the world needs Marechitaya. If you come to a Rav, and he's very, you know, very into Limud, he's very deep and everything. You ask him a question, oh, I didn't learn this part yet. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You're going to stay away in Safek. But if you come to a Rav, and you ask him, oh, right away he's going to tell you, it's right over there, right? And you ask him a question, okay, so it's a Kushia, a Yayen, he's going to start looking up, right away he's going to give you the answer. Marechitim, those who sell wheat, the Gemara says, that's what the Gemara calls it, it's much better, so it's better to take care of when they came to propose to Av Yosef, the Gemara says he knew that uh, he passed in the shuk, and one of the sorcerers over there, one of the witches over there, told them, "If you accept it, you're going to live two years, and that's it. Yeah. After accepting the job, you're going to live not more than two years." So Rabbi Yosef says, "You know what? I'm not going to take a job." Now, if he will be arrogant or looking for kavod, what he would say? Yeah, are you going to die in two years? Right? So what? <laughs> he was enough. No, let me live more. I want to study more. I want to do a lot of more mitzvot, right? So he didn't accept. They told him, sure, I don't accept. Take Rabba. The Gemara says, Irviach. He won. Why? Because Rabba Malach is Rimshana. Rabba was in was the Rosh Hashiva for 20 years. <coughs> after Rabba died, they came to Rav Yosef. He accepted. And after two years, he died. He gained 20 years of life, right? The Gemara says more, something more interesting. Those 20 years that he was not Rosh Hashiva and he did not accept to be Rosh Hashiva, he wouldn't call a doctor to his house. Wow. Rav Yosef, he was studying a lot. So when he didn't feel good or needed to, like, dam, like, to take out blood, to give thing, he would call the Oman, the, 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 the doctor, to his house. Those 20 years to show really is enough, right? What did he do? He wouldn't call the Uman to his house. He would go to do it. <coughs> As usually he would call the, the one would come to him, but in this case he wanted to show he saw enough and it didn't even bother him that Rabbi became Rosh Hashiva. So he, he wouldn't call the Uman, right? The question I saw in an interesting sefer, they asked the question, how come the Gemara qualifies Rav Yosef as Sinai? Rabba was called Okerarim. Rav Yofis was called Okerarim, understand. Okerarim, he can take a mountain, right? And he can smash it down, he can uproot the mountain. Okay, that's, a, that's like we understand. But why call Rav Yosef, like why, why this definition of Sinai? So exactly that. Sinai, what was so Yuchad about Sinai? Sinai was the smallest mountain, right? There was Tavor, there was other mountains, and they even came. They even came to, um, uh, to, uh, to Matan Torah. They asked Hashem, give us the, give the Torah upon us, right? Why did Hashem to tell them? No. I'm going to choose the smallest mountain, Sinai. Why? Sinai is Anav, right? So Rav Yosef is called Sinai because of his Anava. So it's interesting. In Mara Masechet Sota, the Gemara says, Mishemet Rebi Batla Anava. When Rabbi Yehuda Nasi passed away, there was no more people that can say it on themselves, they're Anavim, right? Anavim, Anava. So the Gemara says, Amarav Yosef, Vaika Ana. How can you say this? I'm still here, right? I'm still here, so don't say that. But the question is, if you're Anav, how can you say that? <laughs> how can you say that? We're saying, Mishemet Rebi Batla Anava. And he said, Vaika Ana, Vaika Ana. So the Farshim say, you know what it means? That's the highest level of Anava. Why? To be able to say on yourself that you are enough. To know that you are enough. To be able to say it and not to be affected from it. Some people say, ah, oh, I'm looking for kavod, right? No. The anava of Rav Yosef was so, such in a great madriga. When he hears people say, there's no anavim anymore. He says, vaikana, 
I'm here, right? Whoa. And this is that, that's the highest that's the level highest. of anava that but you can say knows. yourself. Everybody, everybody knows, knows, and he can say it himself, but and it can still be enough. Yes. It's still be enough. Yes. Okay. okay. Now um, they say that um, that the Rabbi Milovlin, there was uh, Rav Meir Milovlin, one of the big rabbis, right? He says, I like a rasha that knows that is a rasha, and not a tzaddik that knows that is a tzaddik. So they asked the Mabshah, how come you like a rasha that knows a rasha? He says, a rasha that knows his rasha is dovek b'midat ha'emet. If he's rasha and he knows his rasha, the emet. So ma Hashem oev, Hashem oev ta'emet. Hashem loves the emet. Hashem is with him. He's rasha, but he knows his rasha. At least he knows. So, he doesn't know the truth. But the Chad Tzadik, and he knows he's Tzadik. What's the meaning? I know that I'm Tzadik. I know that I'm Tzadik. Umavi Zohar, Rabbi Milovlin brings a Zohar that says, if you think you're a Tzadik, right? If you think you're a Tzadik, you're, you're, you're considered nothing. Okay? Hashem is not with you. Why? Because how can you know you're Tzadik? How, how, did you, how, how can you know that you're on the level of Tzadik? You know that? Somebody told you that? Right? But you know you're a tzaddik. So it means you consider yourself a tzaddik. Says the Zohar, this is anava, this is pasul. This is this is uh, this is midag, zegavtan, zegavtan, zegavtan. This is arrogance. This is arrogance to think about yourself a tzaddik, right? And we see, we see exactly from Matan Torah on Har Sinai, we see something. We says kolaboreach me akavod, akadob akavod rovadecha pachara. Okay? What happened in Har Sinai exactly? What does Hashem show us in our Sinai, right? Hashem shows us in our Sinai that all the mountains, Tavor, Everest, right, Alps, all the mountains, they came to, to Muhammad Ar Sinai and they wanted Akash Bukhu to give them to us. So basically what they were doing, they were running after Akash Bukhu and telling him, wow, we know the Torah is so important. We know Hashem, you're going to give the Torah. What Hashem Omer? No, no, tilchut, 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 get out of here. Don't run after me. I don't need people running after me. The only one I didn't get out of place is who? Sinai. So Hashem says, I need to the Torah. Hashem showed us on Muhammad Ar Sinai, not only that Sinai is Anav, Hashem Kivyachol himself showed us that the other mountains running after him, after Kadosh Baruch Hu, to give them, he threw them away. So some people, right? There can be two types. There could be a person enough but when the kavod comes to him oh baruch hashem baruch hashem it came to me you know as we have the kavod as a who sameh the kavod as a because who is showing us by mother sinai that not only you're not you're supposed to be enough you're supposed to be boreach me a kavod right you should run away from the kavod it says it says in the in the gemara in the gemara in the gemara in the also in the gemara it says, Lama zachu betilel shalachak motam. There was always discussion for years and years. Machloket bet shamay betilel. Right? And we know, we know when Mashiach is going to come, the halacha is going to return to be like bet shamay. So ba'olam hazeh halacha ke betilel. Shoyel tagmara, the Gemara is asking, Ma zachu? Hechem zachu? How did they have this schut to the halacha to be, to be decreed like them? Right? They said, Begah shayu anavim. What's the anava? Always when the machloket bet shamay betilel, we say, they used to say, Bet Shammai says that, and we say that, right? As opposed to some people, they would say, no, I say that. This is Agava. You can say, this rabbi, this posek says that, but I'm, I don't agree. I, th I think it's like this, and here. this is Anava. But if you say, this is the Alaha, this is what, this is Gava. Lama zachu Bet Hillel? First they say what Bet Shammai says, and then they will say... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And we see Hillel himself. This is Bet Shammai. That's Bet Shammai or Bet Hillel. But what Hillel himself, the teacher, the head, right? The Gemara says that Erev Shabbat, Erev Shabbat, there was a person trying to get Hillel upset. Right? And even a bet, yeah. 400 go, uh, coins with, yeah. with his friend to get him upset. And the Gemara says three times, he came to him, he tried, he 
he did he, he wasn't able to get upset, right? Why? Video, okay. <laughs> he even got so the person got so upset, he told them, I hope you're not there's not gonna be many rabbis like you. Right? And it's true, there were not many rabbis. Okay. Exactly. According to the reincarnation, they say there was he was the the, the Ramami Pano says he had an utensil of Moshe Rabin. So to tell you this Shabbat Vatashem Parshat Itro, we're gonna read the Sirta Divrod, right? The Lotil Tzach, Lotin Af, Anuchi Hashem Lokecha, all those things. But when you learn things, you learn things, you learn Torah, Talmud Torah, Kenegit Kulam, everything, but you should know. And a Torah mit kayemet, the Torah could be only with somebody's anav. Why? We say in Perkei Avot, Moshe kibel Torah misinai umsara li Yeshua. So kol am farshim shalim shela. Moshe kibel Torah misinai. No. Moshe kibel Torah al Sinai. He went on al Sinai. What is it? Misinai. Sinai is not Torah. Sinai came to him. Here is the Torah. What is it? No. Moshe kibel Torah mi Sinai, a kavana me amida shel Sinai. The same way Sinai was anav, right? He he's the only humble mountain. Didn't come. Ask Hakadosh Baruch I want you to give the Torah. He he was small, and Hashem gave the Torah on him. So Moshe saw the midat anav is so great in the eyes of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Vaish Moshe anav mod. Ask the Berav Ben Ishai. In Pirkei Avot it says, "U meod meod ave shefal ruach." ומאוד מאוד אבי שפעל רוח, כן? בענב, מאוד מאוד. And by Moshe Rabbeinu it says in the Torah, ואיש Moshe ענב מאוד, one time. So the Tanah says מאוד מאוד, means you can be more than Moshe Rabbeinu. How can we say Moshe ענב מכל האדם? זאת רבי נשכה מתרץ, no. אתה צריך every person מאוד מאוד, in the ענבה, in the humbleness, right? אבל Moshe Rabbeinu מאוד מכל האדם. So what did Moshe Rabbeinu? מאוד מאוד מאוד. He had two plus one. As well, no, meod, mikol adam. Kol adam, meod, meod, and a shfal ruach. Al Moshe Rabbeinu, meod. Three times. Three times. Tell you the anava of Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's why they say, Korach nivla ba'adama. Why Korach nivla ba'adama? Because Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu, was on the level of the ground. Venachnu ma? Where, where? Nothing. Nothing. Afar, efer, ken? As Korach had to go under Moshe. The only way you can go under Moshe is under the ground. Exactly. Because he... Madu atit nasehu. Koach is saying, Moshe Rabbeinu, why are you so arrogant? Why are you trying to rule over us? So Hashem wanted to tell him, no, you have to be under him. So the only way to be under him, he's the level of the Adama, you have to go under the Adama. That's the only way. So to tell you that Hashem, Abotai, we're trying to be in Torah, in Moshe Rabbeinu, in Torah Torah Kedusha, in the Midot. But Hashem, one of the Midot to learn Torah is to be Anav. To be anav, and b'shut anava, we should be zochay asot. Amen. Amen.